uh, in our study of, uh, the, of the Hallel Psalms during the summer regarding the matter of uh, its pertinence for our life. Uh, many of us may think of them as merely devotional, and, and certainly they're that. Uh, they were, there are worship songs that were sung uh, in the temple. Uh, and so it's certainly great that we have uh, them turned into worship songs for us. But they're also revelation of truth. Uh, we want to give our, our eyes and ears and our hearts to understand what God has to say to us uh, regarding uh, his word to our lives in the Hallel Psalms, Psalm 113 through 118. Uh, with that in mind, uh, since you will be uh, standing for a little, you'll be sitting for quite a while, you might as well stand for a mi minute. Everyone stand up, if you will, so we can. Uh, let's read this portion from Psalm 115. Let's read this in unison. Here we go. Those who make idols will become like them. Everyone who trusts in them. O Israel, trust in Adonai. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in Adonai. He is their help and their shield. You who fear Adonai, trust in Adonai. He is their help and their shield. Adonai remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear Adonai, the small together with the great. Adonai, cause increase to you and your children. You will be blessed of Adonai, maker of heaven and earth. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful to be encouraged by your word. Uh, thank you that you care about us, you remember us, you're mindful of our lives. Uh, we pray that your name would be exalted and glorified as we study your word, not merely in our understanding, but how we live out the truth of it. And so we ask even now that Ruach HaKodesh, uh, the Holy Spirit, the very one who inspired the writing of Scripture, that he would now illuminate our minds and hearts and empower us to live out the truth that we might live as free people. Add your blessing, I pray, in Yeshua's name I ask it, amen. Please be seated, if you will. As we consider this section of Scripture, uh, I would like to uh, keep in mind that we live in a world that is consequential. Things happen, and you know, there is going to be a result. So, a man falls off a cliff, someone wryly says, well, that'll leave a mark, indeed. And so, we live in a, in a world with enough experience, you've been around the block a few times, you know that there's always consequences to whatever you do in life. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is a result or a consequence of the Spirit the root of the Spirit is abiding in Yeshua. The fruit of the Spirit is the love, the joy, the peace, and all the results. It's a consequence. And so the spiritual life of our, uh, of our, uh, our spiritual lives are based on these very truths here. And so the Bible actually says, I'll bless those who bless Israel, and I'll curse the one who curses Israel. Why? Because there's consequence. There's consequence. Now, people don't like that. I remember when uh, about 10 years ago or so, uh, some country had a horrible uh, tsunami, uh, and I mentioned that a week prior they had, they had condemned Israel. In my mind, it didn't seem a big, uh, big deal that God's word proves true, even in the negative. Uh, he is faithful to his word for better or for worse. Uh, and so we want to understand the Bible continues in that vein and teaches us what you sow, this also will you reap. And so those who whine, I didn't realize there'd be consequences. That's the refuge of fools uh, who are immature, inexperienced, and should know better, uh, etc. And so uh, the maturing believer lives for the glory of God. The unsaved and the carnal live for self through their idols, uh, foolishly thinking that they'll secure them, it'll satisfy them, or whatever that might be other than God. And so no idol can compare with the omniscient. Uh, this, this slide is a summary of the previous verses in Psalm 115. 
And so uh, nothing can compare with the omni-God we have, omniscient, omnipresent, uh, omnipotent. Uh, he's alive and well. And so an idol can't hear anyone for idols. They can't help anyone for idols cannot help themselves. Uh, you say, well, what's the big deal? What difference does it make so I worship something that's not precisely as God would want my worship? What difference will it make? Well, uh, besides the fact that idolatry is an offense against God, you shall have no other gods before me. Uh, so we want to understand that God is offended by such matters, uh, but it also impacts the life of the idolater, of the person who is depending on trusting in, uh, looking for satisfaction from that which is other than the Lord himself. There's always consequences, for better or for worse. There are always consequences. And God is actually counting on that in our life as believers. If you've already come to personal faith in Yeshua, you've already personally trusted in his death for your sins, his atonement for your sins, and you're a child of God according to what the scripture says. That being said, God is counting on your development uh, through consequences, that when consequences happen in your life, they will become a wake-up call uh, that you need to be living for God's calling, for his great purpose, for your life in Yeshua. And so uh, God created, this is all introduction if you're a visitor here, uh, God created humanity in his own image. Here's the big picture of the issue. Uh, this image was terribly tarnished by sin. Uh, and so we're, we're created to represent him because of sin, we misrepresent him. Okay? Uh, we're supposed to represent his love, his goodness, and kindness, but we misrepresent him with selfishness and anger and hatred and fear and everything else. And so that being the case, but God being rich in mercy, Messiah came, died for our sins. Uh, he redeemed and restored us to uh, the image, our original design, and better. And from uh, that moment of salvation, we are now intended by faith to grow. To grow and be conformed into Yeshua's character. Uh, and so we, many of us here have, have meditated on these scriptures that it says, you know, all things work together for good to those who love God, called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And so we're being conformed into the likeness, uh, the character of Yeshua. Uh, but that growth is actually by faith, uh, is only realized when, by the object of faith. If you have faith in someone or something else other than Yeshua, you will not grow, you'll be corrupted by it. You'll be stumbled by it. Your, your life will be undermined by the very thing you're trusting in if it's something other than Yeshua. And so we want to understand the object of our faith. We run the race with endurance, looking unto Yeshua, abiding in Yeshua, trusting in Yeshua, following Yeshua, etc. And so with this particular Hallel Psalm, as we've been studying it, uh, it was given by God to teach us how to grow, how to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. I know uh, for many visitors here uh, and those live streaming, you may think of these concepts as solely New Covenant, uh, visitors, New Testament, New Covenant, Brit uh, You may think of them uh, as New Testament or New Covenant concepts, but they're actually biblical concepts from cover to cover, as we'll see. And so growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, this is how we're transformed into all God created and redeemed us to be in our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. This is how we, you see, transformed, isn't that just a new covenant concept? Not according to the word of God. Let's take a look at the outline. It's in your bulletin, so you can take notes. Uh, etc. So uh, the trust transformations principle is scriptural. That's the first thing we'll see. The second thing we'll see, verse 9 through 11, trust transformations people are significant. Uh, and then thirdly, you may not think of yourself as significant. God thinks about you better than you do. Trust transformations power is sufficient. So we'll take a look at this in due course. 
as we understand the transformation that faith brings about, trust, uh, another word for faith, that faith brings about as we're looking unto Yeshua. Starting at the top, the first point, trust transformation principle is scriptural. Uh, the transformational principle is scriptural. Those, it says here in verse 8, those who make idols will become like them, everyone who trusts in them. And so we want to see the issue of trust. Uh, Batach in the Hebrew, uh, it's a synonym uh, for faith, uh, for believing, weight, depending on the Lord, relying on the Lord, abiding in the Lord, following the Lord, trusting all that. These are all synonyms of the very same uh, faith that we all hold in Yeshua or many of us may hold in Yeshua. Uh, and this is the principle for growth. You say, no, no, I trusted in Yeshua when I first came to faith. Now I need to learn a few different Hebrew words. That's why I'm here. If I learn a few different Hebrew words, I'll probably then, you know, grow. I'll be excited again. Uh, yeah, you'll be uh, distracted uh, with learning some new novel Hebrew word or something of that sort. Uh, but that may distract you from the very focus of Yeshua you need to have. And so everything we're teaching is not meant to distract you from Yeshua, but to remind you and reinforce the need to trust in him and look to him and him alone. As it says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, as you first trust in Yeshua, so walk in him. The faith doesn't change. Yeshua is our object for salvation, sanctification, glorification, the whole growth process. And so the issue of making idols, we looked at that uh, last week. Uh, and so we want to just note uh, what it's saying here, sort of summarizing what we looked at. Those who are making idols, you may want to ask yourself a question. What am I making? What am I achieving? What am I trying to accomplish? What is my life all about? Uh, what am I trusting in? What am I hoping for? And so uh, you say, well, I'm trying to make enough money so I can retire. Fine, then what? You somehow think that the word retire is some mystical experience that alleviates your need to trust in the Lord and follow him as you should be doing now and will be doing then? Because if you're not doing it now, you won't be doing it then. And so you want to understand, what are you trusting? What are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to accomplish? And so when you attempt to make what will save you, secure you, or satisfy you, uh, you become what you make. You say, what are you talking about? You crazy man. No, I'm just understanding verse 8. Those who make idols will become like them, everyone who trusts in them. You will become what you're trusting in. You'll become what you're trusting in. Some of you trust your fears. And so therefore, there are people who have perhaps hurt you, who have you know, just undermined your life, and you live traumatically reliving that, looking to it, trying to fend off, trying to protect yourself. You are depending on your fears to defend you and protect you. No, you're being conformed to what you fear, what you're trusting in. Remember, fear of the Lord's the beginning of wisdom. What do you fear? Trust in the Lord, revere the Lord, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, but in any case, it depends whatever you're trusting in. Some people are family. Uh, some people think, you know, uh, a big family, therefore I'm satisfied and happy and all that. Or my business, I have good grief, got a wonderful business, that's great. Uh, or the skills I develop, you know, no one can slice it and dice it, no one can fix a car, no one can do this, whatever. You think, look at your skills and all those things that you trust will secure you, satisfy you, uh, and, and maybe even save you, but nonetheless, uh, you're wrong. You're wrong. Uh, that can never help you. Uh, those things that you are developing uh, and achieving, uh, rather than them fulfilling your life, uh, you're going to find that your life becomes more and more hopeless because an idol can never help you. Uh, your business can re not really uh, address the real needs of your soul. Uh, you may say, well, I, I don't care about the real needs of my soul. I care about making enough money uh, so we can live comfortably. Thank you very much. You may say that now, but you may hate the idea when your children are on drugs 
because you actually prioritized something than what God had called you to do. You made your business your sole focus for your life and didn't realize you're called to be a husband and a father. And you need to invest and minister to your family and care about them. And all the money that you made will never meet their needs, and now you realize it never met your needs. This is the problem of idolatry. And we're talking about those things that the world calls good, uh, etc. Beware of trusting in what's good instead of what's best. Uh, the Lord is what is needed in your life. And so all that produces a hopelessness, whatever you put your hope into. And don't trust, don't trust in what you made. Trust in the one who made you. Trust in the one who made you. As uh, William Cowper said, uh, the self-made man, indeed, yes, and he worships his creator. This afternoon, you'll be rolling in the aisles over that when you think about these things, just what I'm saying. A little early in the day for it. Got it. Anyway, and so everyone who trusts in them. So the idea is not just what you're making, what are you trusting in? What are you trusting in? Uh, what do you trust in, what you depend on, act on, have confidence in? Uh, your idols reflect your values, uh, that your active reinforcement uh, become a hardwired character. What you value, what you think of as important, what you think is worthy of your time, worthy of your talents, worthy of your treasure, all the things that you value, all those matters, as you keep living out those values, they hardwire you into becoming what you're actually depending on. That's why you need to value the Lord our God. That's why we say every Shabbat, we shall love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our muchness, our might, all that we have, all our resources. And if you do that, there's no room for idolatry. Where there is idolatry is where you're not loving God with all your heart and soul and might. That's what ends up happening. And your life is, uh, is deficient for it. And so uh, whatever those things are, you become uh, your own stereotype and you end up being trapped in your own brand. Uh, what you're hoping people will know you by Yes, wonderful. You're becoming exactly what you're hoping uh, will become your, 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 your uh, persona uh, in the hearts and lives of others. So we trust in the one who proved himself trustworthy by dying for us. That's where our faith needs to be. And so, uh, what are you becoming? Uh, you mean, what do you mean? Well, unconfessed and unchecked sin uh, has you becoming what I never intended you to ever be. And so you may be coming bad uh, as opposed to becoming like Yeshua because you're trusting in something else. And so uh, what are you becoming? Idols can't speak. And so you find yourself, when you tell lies, you can't speak the truth in love. You've been depending on a lie to either protect you or promote you. But no lie is of the truth. Idols, it says there, cannot see. Uh, you can't see God. Or his path. Why? Because the world's God, uh, Hasatan, uh, the devil and Satan, has blinded uh, the eyes, the minds of the unbelieving. Uh, but blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are the pure of heart. For they shall see God. So the cleansing we have that purifies us as we sang, the finished work of Messiah, it cleanses us, clears it up so we can now see the Lord, follow the Lord, depend on the Lord, trust in the Lord. This is what happens. Idols can't hear. And so you may have lost, you can't hear a still small voice. You actually need something to grab your attention like a car accident. My wife and I, my dear wife Miriam and I, we were uh, ministering in New Orleans uh, one year, uh, and we stayed at the home of a believer there who's very much, you know, kind of a stalwart in her congregation there in New Orleans. Uh, and we talked with her, and she said, you know, I, 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 I have one weekend off a year. 
I say, what do you mean one weekend off a year? Yeah, one weekend when I don't try to live so fully for God. I said, what? She goes, yeah, one weekend, Super Bowl weekend. I pack up my van with cases of beer, take off wherever the Super Bowl is being, being hit, uh, uh, played. Wherever it's in, I, I just take off, that's my weekend, uh, I go do it. I said, it's wrong, not one weekend a year. And she said, God would have to hit me in the head or something for me to, get, to understand it. Well, she was driving down the road on the way to the Super Bowl that year, and hit a bump in the road, a case of beer came, hit her right in the head. <laughs> Maybe you need a wake-up call. Maybe you need a case of beer to hit you right in the head. <laughs> God is good. He loves you too much to let you get away with it. So, you know, duck. <laughs> duck. You can't hear a still, small voice because you become dull of hearing. Hebrews 5.11. You become dull of hearing. You may have once heard the voice of the Lord, understood his word, appreciate his truth for your life, but now it seems fuzzy and hazy. What has happened? Well, you become dull of hearing by giving in to other things other than trusting in Yeshua, Messiah. Uh, idols can't smell. Uh, and so you find yourself, uh, you can't smell what's rotten. Uh, you listen to music that does not honor God, but dishonors God. Uh, you listen, you watch movies that are going to be an embarrassment uh, if God was sitting in the room with you, and he is. He'll never leave you or forsake you. You can't smell what is rotten. Your whole sense of smell, but we are called to be a fragrance of Messiah. Uh, the one, uh, the one uh, an odor unto death unto one, and a aroma of life unto another. Who is sufficient for these things here? And so what is the issue? It's not that things have changed, it's that you have therefore lost your edge, your spiritual awareness, uh, your spiritual wherewithal, your sensitivity to the things of God, so you no longer blush at certain jokes. And if you dare say something, someone says, it's just a joke, as if that justifies anything. You know, it's just a TV show, yeah, as if that would justify anything at all. Uh, but nonetheless, you've actually substituted entertainment for edification. And the result of that is not going to be a pretty scene here. And so idols can't handle things. You can't handle your calling. You can't handle the truth. Uh, and so it says in Scripture, in Colossians 2, inflate you without cause by his fleshly mind, not holding fast to the head, not clinging to Yeshua, not clinging to him through all the issues of life uh, and your grip on the word of God, the sword of the spirit, it's like the grip of a baby. Anything knocks it out of your hand. And so you're not following the Lord in your calling, focusing upon Yeshua to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. And so idols can't walk and you're not walking with the Lord. The word of God says, 1 Peter 2, 8, they stumble because they disobey the word. Why do believers stumble? Because they disobey the word. No, with the circumstances, with two, because they disobey the word. If you trust in the word of God, he will make your feet like hinds feet in high places. He will call you to do a work of God in the world that desperately needs him. And rather than the world impact you, you will make a difference in the world because you're called to be salt and light, to impact this world, to make a difference in your relationships, in your circumstances, at work, at school, wherever God may have you. That's what God has called you to do. Idols can't uh, declare anything. They can't mutter, the Hebrew says there. And so you can't declare the word of God, though you know he is the truth. Though you know there is no salvation other than in Yeshua the Messiah. That there's only one God and therefore there's only one way to God. And the provision has been made in Yeshua. Even so in circumstances, situations that you're in with certain kinds of people, or maybe at certain jobs or wherever you're at, you keep it all to yourself because you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be uninvited to certain parties or certain affairs or people might look at you weird or whatever it may be. The Bible says when he is a witness, if he does not tell it, then he will bear his guilt. 
Leviticus 5.1, what you sow, you will reap. And if you're not sharing the Lord, that's a sin of omission, even though we think of sin as merely commission. No, you're omitting the very righteousness God has called us to live out. And so as we understand these things, we see the impact of trusting in those matters that are not God and not honoring Yeshua's name. And so we come to the second point, the trust transformational people are significant. I've summarized, because it says the same thing as you're aware, and we read the text before. Let the house of Israel trust in the Lord, he is their help. Let the house of Aaron trust in the Lord, for he is their help in their shield. Let those who fear the Lord trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. So I just summarized it in this portion here. I uh, hope you can bear with me on that matter here. And so those who trust in Adonai, those who depend on, rely on, look to, uh, abide in, etc. Uh, those who, those transform through personal trust. And so there's a word to each of these groups. Israel, oh the house of Israel, don't trust in your chosen status. Do not trust in your chosen status. Uh, praise God that Israel is the chosen people, but don't Believe your own press. Trust in the Lord. Personally trusting in him. Personally trusting in who he is and what he has done for you. This is what you have to do. Uh, trust in the promised Messiah. There is no one else, nowhere else to go. Messiah has come. Mashiach has come. Trust in Messiah. House of Aaron, you know, the priestly sect. Uh, the priestly tribe, uh, the Levites, and all the Aaronites. But you never heard the word Aaronite before. See, you learned something new. Right away, the price of admission right there. Aaron, don't trust in your divine service. It's pretty easy, you know, when you're doing something as important as uh, the Levitical priests are doing. It's pretty important work, you know, bringing the sacrifices, all the work. And you can actually think that you're... You're significant, you're important because of the work you're doing. No, no, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. But, but the service is so important. Do not be self-deceived by your service. It's only the Lord Yeshua who can make a difference in your life. And everything else is an outworking of that. When you look to Messiah's death, Look to the finished work day by day when it says trusting in Yeshua, following Yeshua, uh, running the race looking unto Yeshua. All that is looking to his finished work. That's what it means. It's not just Yeshua in some general sense. It's what he has done for you when he died for you. When you do that, you are not looking to yourself. You're dying to yourself. And you should do that daily, Paul says. Die daily. Look to Yeshua constantly, ongoingly, abiding in him, in his death for your sins, so you die to yourself. And when you do that, that's when Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, goes to work. He goes to work when you're looking to, depending upon Yeshua's death, dying to yourself. That's when the Holy Spirit works through you uh, to the glory of God. That's your service. That's your prayer life. That's your obedience. It's not, you say, well, I'm just going to obey the word of God. You're a legalist. You're a legalist. You somehow think that my obedience is going to transform me. It couldn't help you before. It's only Yeshua. As you receive Messiah Yeshua, so walk in him. Understand obedience is the outworking, the result, the consequence of trusting in Yeshua. It doesn't, it do, it do, it, it's not something that you focus on. You focus on Yeshua and therefore you obey and follow him. Uh, and so trust in Messiah's sacrifice, O house of Aaron. Uh, God-fearers, it says those who fear Adonai. Well, God-fearers, this is used in the scripture for the believing Gentiles, the God-fearers. Uh, I have a bunch of scriptures up there reflecting on that matter. But the point of the matter is, you see, you're already talking about Israel, and then you're already talking about, you know, Aaron, what's left? Well, the Gentiles. You say, well, God really loved Gentiles? He loves every one of them. 
He loves every Gentile he can find. He loves Gentiles. He loves everyone. And so the God fears. You say, well, what do you mean? Oh, those who fear God, trust in the Lord. What? Don't trust in your own reverence. Don't trust in your faithfulness. Don't trust in your faith. Your faith is in the Lord, not in your faithfulness. Your faith has to be in the Lord, not in your own reverence or your faith or your trustworthiness or any of those things that may characterize you. No, your faith has to be in the Lord, not merely in your own reverence about the Lord. You're, you're trusting your fear of the Lord. No, no, no. Don't trust in your fear of the Lord. <laughs> Believe me, it's not that much. <laughs> You say, well, I, I think I'm a loving person. I'm sure you are. Compared to me, you're probably great. But it's not compared to me. It's a perfect love you have to compare it to. So don't trust in yourself at all. Your reverence, your love, your kindness, whatever you think. I helped a little old lady across the street. Good for you. But I found out she didn't want to cross. So dragging little old ladies across the street is not a good thing. Stop it right now. And so the God for us, trust in the Lord. Trust in Messiah's mercy for you, as it says in the scriptures. The mercy he has for the Gentiles uh, because he loves them. He loves Jews. He loves Gentiles. He loves us all. He loves us all the same in the Messiah. And so uh, it says there in 2 Kings 17, 41, you can see the scripture, I believe, on the screen there. So while these nations feared the Lord, they also served their idols. What? You see, they gave one good Shabbat a week to fearing the Lord. The rest of the time, I have to get down to real business here. You understand. I'm sure, I'm sure he's satisfied with that one day a week. What, what, what do you want, two days a week? I mean, this is a negotiating issue, right? Okay, I'll give him uh, two, a day and a half. No! The problem is you can't say, well, I trust in Messiah, but I got to also trust in all these other things. That is unbelief. That is just a religious game you're playing, uh, parsing out where your faith will be at any given time. And so the people transformed through precise trust. He is their help. He is their shield. He is their help. He is their shield. There is no other help. There is no other shield. Uh, active help for victory and duty, because the shield is up there. Ezra, in the Hebrew, has to do with the military aid to fight the good fight. You're in spiritual warfare. The enemy is prowling like a lion, seeking might devour, and if you are just going to be blasé about it, if you're going to be lackadaisical about it, if you're going to go let your mind go into neutral, you're going to find it's backsliding every time because it's an uphill trip here. And so it's a spiritual battle, spiritual warfare, and you have aid, you have provision. Yeshua is our provision. Uh, and so understand this, this idea of his help for us. And so the weak and the poor, those who are wounded in the warfare, we're here to help them, point them to Yeshua. Uh, he is the help when we trust in him. Not only is he our provision, he is our protection. Sounds like a Sukkot message. You know, in the sukkah, uh, we take the branches representing the harvest of his provision and make them into booze, which pictures his protection in the wilderness. He is our provision and our protection. Well, it's the same way all the way through the Bible here. And so uh, the shield passively for us, uh, you say, what is that? The shield of faith. What is the shield of faith? Uh, when you go through Ephesians 6 and it talks about the various uh, uh, parts of the armor, that's faith in Yeshua. Faith in Yeshua is a shield. It's not something other than faith in Yeshua. It's, not, it's never something other than faith in Yeshua. Faith in Yeshua is your shield of faith. This is where your protection lies. What he did for you. What he did for you is all you'll ever need to have done. For the finished work of God, a uh, finished work of Messiah is the perfect work of God for you, now and forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Keep your eyes on him, depending on him, trusting him, and following him, uh, etc. 
Uh, so we want to understand uh, our faith enjoys his protection. We have confidence. We're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Why? Because of who we are? Through him who loved us. In him we are complete. In him we are complete. Get your eyes off of him. You're going to go through the issues of feeling incomplete, insecure, inadequate. That's when your eyes are on yourself, not on him. In him you are complete. Do you believe that? Amen. I know that's what the Bible says, Colossians 2.10. It says in him we are complete. But do you believe it? Or do you believe what you're telling yourself? about how I'm just a loser, you know, uh, just, you know, basically, well, you know. No. There's a God who loves you, who's done everything for you, so you can live with him forever and ever and ever. And therefore, in Messiah, you are complete. You have the blessing in his righteousness, not your own, in all he brings to the table. And so Yeshua is, uh, he is the Lord, he is Adonai, uh, he is our help, he is our shield in every battle. Uh, uh, active trust in his sacrifice is our full sufficiency, uh, our great provision for us uh, through all the battles. He works all things together for good to those who love God, conform to the image of his son. And so this is the work that God is doing in Yeshua for our lives. There's collateral scriptures uh, up there. Uh, you can upload, uh, download this or take a look at it afterwards and check out all the little details that reinforce the point of the matter. That he is our help. He is our provision. He is our shield. He is our protection. He is our all in all. The alpha, the omega, the first and the last. He is our everything. Keep your eyes on him. And so the final point, the trust transformational power is sufficient. And so Adonai remembered us. What? Adonai remembered us. It says, uh, I have up there from Psalm 105, 8, the Lord remembered his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations. You say, wow, what's that mean? Well, when it talks about his covenant in this section, uh, his covenant is Israel's security. Uh, all of Israel's security is found in the Abrahamic covenant. Uh, every time we blew it and fumbled the ball and we're in the wilderness longer than we should be, uh, we find Moses up there pleading with God according to the Abrahamic covenant. He doesn't bring up the, the Torah of Mo, his own Torah, the Torah of Moses as such. He brings up the Abrahamic covenant, which has blossomed into the new covenant. I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel, house of Judah. It's our security blanket as a nation. And so it says he remembered, he remembers us according to his covenant promises here. And so the promise of trust transformation for everybody, those who trust in the Lord, in Adonai, are those blessed by Adonai. Those who trust are those who are blessed. It's a direct correlation here. He remembered us. He will bless the house of Israel, the house of Aaron, those who fear Adonai. Uh, summarizing it again, the small together with the great all who trust in him, he blesses. Uh, these, this blessing is going to be transformative. So he blesses you to transform you. He empowers you to live out the life of Yeshua, as we noted before. And though those who trust are going to be those who are transformed. Uh, God knows everyone who trusts. He knows every single one of us. Uh, and so, uh, and when he says it remembers, uh, it doesn't mean he merely recollects, uh, you know, where did I put Nadler? I left him in Charlotte? Oh, well, hope you enjoyed the kid. Okay. Uh, well, he remember, doesn't mean just to be mindful or something like that. It means mindful to act, to act upon. And so in the scriptures, when he remembered Noah, it meant he did something for Noah. When it says he remembered Sarah, uh, he, he brought about, you know, Isaac. He did something for her. Remembering is to act upon. And so when it says he remembered uh, uh, Rebecca, he brought a child for her because he, that's what it means when it says he remembered. When we remember the Lord, we act upon that. We remember the Shabbat means that we don't think, oh yeah, today's, uh, today's the seventh day. Oh, I remembered. No, it means we act upon it, you see? So in a very simple way, God realizes everyone who trusts in Yeshua to bless them. He remembers you to bless you. 
He loves you, and therefore, he wants to bless you. And so everyone who trusts, uh, the word bless, uh, baruch, in the Hebrew, comes from the word for knee, berak, and so to kneel, etc., uh, those who trust are yielded and therefore, thereby blessed. Everyone who's trusting is yielded to him. The covenant God promised his grace provision. He doesn't forget his own, nor let any fail who trust in him. He will not let you fail if you trust in him. You may, you know, uh, Peter stepped out of the boat. Yeshua said, Bo, come out of the boat. He was the only one who did. He walked out of the boat, started walking on the water, but then he got his eyes off Yeshua, saw there were wind and waves, and therefore he sunk because he believed the wind and the waves more than Yeshua. What? In other words, he always calls us out of the boat when there's wind and waves, so we'll face those things in him. Trust in him, follow him, be victorious over the wind and the waves as we trust in the Lord and keep our attention, our focus unto Yeshua. And so this is how we are transformed. This is the empowerment he gives us, the blessing uh, that he gives us, empowering us to be transformed through trust into triumph. And so uh, whether you're small or great, it does not matter. Whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, it does not matter. What matters is what Yeshua brings to the table. What Yeshua brings to the table. You say, well, why do you make a difference between Jews and Gentiles? Well, why do you make a difference between males and females? Oh, I know, some of you don't. None of mind that. Fact of the matter, God does. And so he loves diversity, okay? He loves, not necessarily fluidity, but diversity, all right? The, the transformational blessings, Lord, for everyone, rich and poor, whoever you are. It's not according to your education, your birth order, race, gender, age, your ethnicity. It's not according to any of that. And because of all the blessings in Messiah, not in you, not in your work, not in your race. Not in your, see, some people are trusting in their ethnicity. They trust in the fact that they are a Jew. And therefore, their trust in them, they become more and more and more so, as if that is pleasing to God. No. We utilize our gender, our race, our ethnicity as a tool to glorify Yeshua. These are tools. That's what we do with them. We utilize them for the sake of the good news so everyone can understand it's in Yeshua not in ethnicity or anything else. And so those who don't know the Lord, they'll get caught up in these other things. They'll get caught up in race. Why? Not because there aren't different races. It's because they don't understand God created us all from one person. We're all brothers and sisters. They don't understand that. There are people who get caught up in gender. They think that in their gender they should feel satisfied and complete. That's not true. I've been a man for, let's see, 70-something years. I've been a man for, since birth. I don't know what it feels like to be a man. I have no idea. I'm not that very self-aware, to tell you the truth. But the fact of the matter is, I'm complete in Messiah. And therefore, I use my masculinity as an instrument of grace to minister to other men, etc. And so I'm a husband. I hope one day to be worthy of such a wife. But nonetheless, I use my role as a, I'm not fulfilled as a husband. I'm fulfilled as a child of God. And looking to him, he then empowers me and in the role of a husband to minister to this wonderful woman. To address her needs, but I can't meet her needs. To pray with her and trust God with her. And so whether it's the role of a husband or my gender or what my, my, my citizenship on earth or whether it be whatever it may be, all of those things, if I believe in them for my fulfillment, for my satisfaction, for my completeness, for my identity, you say, behold, Sam, you are a male. I know that. And you're a Jew. I know that too. And you're old. Thank you. I might have forgotten. Thank you. I'm a child of God. All those other things will pass away. 
One day, I won't be thinking about those things at all. Understand, I'm a child of God. That's how God blesses me to be a husband, a father, and whatever else God has called me to be. This is the testimony of Scripture, small together with the great, whatever that may be. And the blessings are in Yeshua, not your work, race, finances, etc. And so, as we conclude here, it says here, Adonai causes increase. Adonai causes increase. Adonai causes increase. To you and your children, to you, you and your children, even as it says in the New Covenant, reiterates us a value for our congregation, Mador, Lador, from generation to generation. That's why our children's ministry is so important to us. Uh, God forbid that we would ever neglect our children. And so we'll get into that. Uh, but the provision, he causes it. As it says in the New Covenant, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 6, and 7, uh, one man plants, another man waters. God gives the increase. This is exactly the same truth being brought out here as well. God causes, Yasaf, a, a, a verbal form that means it causes growth, causes increase. God gives the increase to our trust in Yeshua. Our confidence in, is that he will complete what he began. He began a good work in you, will completed in Messiah Yeshua, will perfect it. Your trust in Yeshua, not self, plugs you into his blessed power source for growth. He gives the increase. He, gives the, he can make your words into good news if you'll trust him for the, your words. He can use you in many different ways if you just trust him accordingly. To you and your children, transformational growth to every generation. When God blesses you with transformational growth, it's also for your kids' kids in mind. It's always Mador Lador from generation to generation. We are declaring the faithfulness of God from generation to generation. Yeshua is the faithfulness of God to all generations. And we trust in him and pass on the blessings of his faithfulness uh, of Messiah that may be given through discipleship from generation to generation. Dr. Lewis Goldberg of Blessed Memory a uh, professor of Jewish studies at Moody Bible College, an elder in our congregation before he passed away. No, no, no. Just become an elder, it won't kill you. So don't think that way. Uh, elder in our congregation, his teaching uh, that children uh, need two hours of Bible teaching outside of the home to reinforce the biblical training they receive inside the home, two hours. That's why we have 9.30 classes and Torah hour during this hour as well. And that's why we do things the way we do things. And so get involved in our children's ministry. Mador, Lador, we got to pass that messianic baton to the next generation. Transformational growth, grace through all creation. Uh, what can God bring to the table? He's the maker of heaven and earth. Yeshua is actually the one who is the creator of all things. John chapter 1 verse 3. Yeshua is the one who actually brought all these things about. Uh, and so every time it says, and you know, God said, let there be light. When he said it, that had to do with the word. That's Yeshua, the ministry of the word. And so the maker of heaven and earth, he, all of this is to help make disciples uh, according to the image of Messiah. And that is we trust in him over all our, in our time, our talent, our, our, our treasure. All the resources come to a transformational purpose for God. All that's for, you may be looking at it for your pleasures, for your distractions, uh, God meant every blessing he gives you, every provision of his for your transformation in the Messiah. And so what or who are you trusting in? If you won't trust in Yeshua with your time, talent, and treasure, then you're trusting in something or someone other than Yeshua. Beware. That's idolatry. You say, I don't think of it that way. I know. I know. When I was a child, I thought like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. It's time for us all to grow up and grow into who God called us to be. Trust in the idol of greed, you become greedier. Messiah's death breaks the bondage of idolatry. The finished work, look to that, it'll break the bondage of idolatry in your soul. 
because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Free to be all that God created and redeemed you to be in Messiah. To be like Yeshua, to be an instrument of grace and good news. And with that in mind, let's bring our hearts before God in prayer right now. As we bow our hearts before the Lord, I, I encourage you to open your heart to God. We close our eyes to concentrate, but we open our hearts to him, that he will do business. We therefore cast our anxieties on him and any areas of our life that is contrary to his nature, his will, his word. We look, we bring them to the Lord. We do repentance, teshuva. We return, we are restored back to where we should be, teshuva. Take a moment. God hears your heart. Bring it before him. Avinu, I thank you for your love and your goodness, a grace that's our sufficiency, all that we have in Messiah that is more than enough to break every bondage, every habit, every nasty thing that seems to control our lives. God is greater. And we place our faith in you right now that the finished work of Messiah is the perfect work for our souls. We look nowhere else to no one else but to you. We trust in you. Set free those who are here that the name of our God may be exalted in their lives. We might become an instrument of grace and good news to those outside these walls to make a difference as salt and light in this world. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.